what I'll do, I'll flick us back to the beginning and explain basically we're going to look at profile ledgers and what we're going to have a look at is what exactly they are, what the implication of a profile ledge is and then also from there a couple of different trades that you can use a ledge to try and act on. <clears throat> so first up, what's a ledge? Right, basically a little edge is formed because the auction process is stopped. So what that's showing you is that as the market's gone up <coughs> or down, whichever way, that it's got to a point and then got stuck. This could be forced, well, this is forcibly done, i.e. the market has, let's say, moved up and then it is constantly then pushed back on. So it doesn't allow the price to go any higher. Now, what this is doing is preventing any further price discovery. Take, for example, if you're moving higher and the market keeps on bouncing off the same point, what that's showing you is that it's being stopped and you're not finding out if there are any more buyers beyond that point. Instead, what you'll find now is someone is willing to sell and sell and sell and sell that area. So you've not found the final buyer or the final seller. So the implication of this incomplete auction is that we should at some point trade through that, that area. Now, the difficult part of that is we should trade through the ledge, It'd be that upside, downside, whichever way that is. You should trade through the ledge, but this then doesn't necessarily, <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should continue through it. So what the ledge creates for you is a target but not necessarily any point to think, well, if you buy the ledge that we're necessarily going to go a long way higher, let's say it's the ledge to the upside, it could well just break the ledge. You find out that there are no more buyers and the market for them falls back. So it provides a target without an entry, essentially. So your game then is you need to find an access to this trade. You need to find a way to get in before the ledge breaks so that when it does break, you can then assess whether you've run out of buying as it breaks or whether, <coughs> excuse me, that break has been, or whether that break has enough energy to keep the move going. Bear in mind though, that ledges are pretty easy to see. It's pretty obvious where a ledge is. So this builds up positioning because what's happening then is as other people start playing for the ledge break as well. So let's say you've got a ledge to the upside, people start playing for it, playing for it, playing for it, getting long, getting long, getting long. You've now got a lot of longs, typically shorter time frame, waiting for this one point to break. Now, if the market starts to go the other way, you've got a lot of positioning that needs to then, excuse me, get unwound as people start to panic out of their positions. You know, they're not necessarily looking for loads, they're looking for the ledge to break and that to be it. So they're not going for massive amounts of reward on the trade, therefore they're not gonna take on excessive risk if it starts to turn against them. So, two potential trades. You either have a breakout through the ledge or you have a positioning liquidation. So those people trying to play for the ledge break don't get it and then have to exit those positions. Right, so, <clears throat> how's a ledge formed to start with? This is an example um, from the S&P, which was specifically the one I was asked about um, the other uh, earlier on today. And this, yeah, prime example of a ledge. I've broken the profile up here. So this is the initial part of it that shows you a three TPO ledge just down here. So in other words, a bad low. What we then get is a trade through it. So the ledge is broken. So there's the initial part that the market is stopped down there at 35 and a quarter. The ledge is broken, we trade through it, but then we come back above and we hold exactly the same place. And once again, we get a couple more touches on it. That's just here. So now you've got this very clear point that we have traded into multiple times and that's what forms your ledge. So what that's showing is you've now got five TPOs of width here with only two below it. It's a very clear sort of three TPO ledge as it would be referred to. Now, what that means is that even though we've had this small amount of selling down here that's gone through the level, it has then consistently been held at that same point. This is not showing a profile then that has that nice balanced rounded out profile, which is what you would 
normally ordinarily be looking for. Your balanced out profile that shows that you run out of any new sellers as the market falls, whereas here we haven't necessarily run out of sellers. You got some selling, but then once again, it's all stopped at the same point. So that's what creates your ledge. And this should be a reference that you keep carrying forward. At some point, you'd be looking at this and this is a potential trade. Now, of course, selling the S&P when it's trading up at 30, 70, where it is now, looking for the ledge to break down at <clears throat> 30, 35 is not really a trade whilst it offers a good reward. How do you manage your risk on that trade? This trade's not become available yet. And that's the important thing you have to remember. But it is nonetheless at some point a trade that may well become available. So don't dismiss these ledgers once they disappear. So let's go and have a look first up at a ledge break trade. And this is a very similar type scenario that what we've had, and this is one, <clears throat> excuse me, one in cable. And this is one that I've talked about a few weeks ago, I believe, very, very similar to a trade that we saw back in the middle of February. So this is becoming a new trade. And it's things like this, where you, you note down what happened, the break of this ledge, the when it happened, what the resultant move was, that starts to develop new trade ideas. And you start then, you can start looking for this, particularly on what I'd call the, the late in day grind down on a ledge like this. Coming in late into the day, late into the week in fact, and you then get this drift through the ledge. So it helps you then understand what you're likely to see as that ledge breaks. So <clears throat> what's been going on here? Well, you can see here what's happening is the ledge is formed up here at 25.79 with a couple of well, multiple touches in the overnight session, a couple more touches in the European morning, then a few more touches in the afternoon. We have had a small amount of trade overnight below there, but once you've got above, that's then become the point that the market has been held at. So what you then need to be looking for is an opportunity to then be short for the break of that ledge. Now, the easiest or obvious opportunity is to buy it or is to sell it as it goes through. Now, seeing as you've got a low down here, this is actually giving you a target. In other situations, we may not have such a clean target. Alternatively, what you might be looking for, particularly as you get this bounce off the ledge once more, is you can then use other reference points to try and position early for the break. The assumption is that if we get back down to this level, it will break. And so therefore, if you can find a point so this high, this low here, that offers you a manageable risk, i.e. you don't need a stop very far above these before these, these would be shown as wrong. Gives you a manageable risk, meaning that by the time you get down to the ledge once more, you're actually, <clears throat> in this instance, pushing nearly 40 ticks on side by the time you get to the ledge. Once the ledge breaks, then you've got scope to continue that move. And then it's about monitoring how the trade develops and whether you want to try and stay in. As I say, this is what I'd call a late in day ledge break. And what you get on those, you seem to get this very steady grind onwards after that ledge break. Right, <clears throat> another example, and this is one created earlier on in the day, created as effectively what's happening here is as we've had a move down, participants try and keep this move going so what they're effectively doing is as the market falls they're trying to keep the move going they're trying to sell up here at 99 you see the first couple of tests on it you get a quick break above and then falls back this breaks all on um, a bond auction but following that we then hold that same point once again and this is what creates this ledge here you see once again three clear tpos wider than the next price also coincides with previous days low as well. So that adds a little bit extra color to it. So we've now got that situation. What you can then be looking for is with the understanding that you're gonna have a lot of people trying to play for a continuation short here. So this is a slightly different scenario of a ledge break. The first one is a ledge break that has been a market that's trying to hold up and then it can no longer hold. Whereas this is one where people are coming in to try and play the next leg down. 
as that happens, they the market breaks through them and then you get this drift move again. So once more, it will start off often with a little pop through the ledge, but then you get this continued drift higher after that. This then gives you this grind all the way back through the range. In fact, grinds all the way to make a new high, not only on the day at the time above 35, but also a new high above the previous day's high as well. <clears throat> so both of these scenarios, it's about spotting that ledge and then looking for the break. Key clue here is that once we've broken higher above what was initially a kind of volume ledge, we come down to have another go at lows and we don't break the low. That's really important because that's showing you that given the chance to drop, the sellers don't come in. So therefore, you've got a lot of worried sellers now who will all still be trying to hold below 99. Once that breaks, then you get this grinding move towards the upside, continuation, and a break all the way through highs of day. Now, what you can also have <clears throat> and bearing in mind that we just talked about ledges that break to the upside so or break so in both scenarios what you will have had is people trying to play for that break trying to position themselves for the break now what that should be telling you is that if people are positioning for the break they are going to be vulnerable to giving up on their trade at some point so what you can also have is a positioning li liquidation so this is a very similar scenario to the one we just looked at above. Sell off as people, and then people try and continue to get short. And what ends up happening is you actually create two ledges here. You've got a ledge created as sellers try and stop the market getting back up out of the previous day's value area. So this creates ledge one at 28.22. And so this is the, the selling artificially stopping price going any higher. So it's continuing to try and push down on the market. What you've then also got is a ledge down at the lows, which you can see down here coming in at 27.69. This is oil. This is where as sellers are coming down, they're getting held. They're not able to then push through those lows. And so this is now building up positioning. It's building up predominantly shorts who are then looking for this continued break towards the downside. They're selling it from up here. You've then got the shorts running into buyers who are passively stopping the market down here. So we've now got this build up of short positioning. What this now tells you is, and you, you know, if you've tried to sell it, you will know yourself that you're becoming increasingly frustrated at the market not going down in here. Bear in mind, this is throughout the overnight session. So you're going to have a lot of participants sitting in this overnight session waiting for the breakdown they're going to be vulnerable so once you start coming out of this this little box and you know almost a mini ledge that forms at 04 this is where the liquidation starts but once you break this upper ledge and the important thing here is the ledge to the downside isn't broken we then break that to the upside you get this fast liquidation move and so rather than the ledge break and continue drift onwards this then more is a case of when you've got a liquidation break you get this very fast move up quick whip towards the upside this is then not new buyers here this is just the shorts exiting so it's a slightly less genuine move this ledge remains in play so then any movement back below 22 in fact then is an opportunity to play through the range for the break of this ledge down here at 69 so we've now in this situation got not just a liquidation but the liquidation now giving you a clue for the breakdown as well so what we then end up with is a move back down below 22 move through the range and then once you get the break of this ledge you then get this faster move towards the downside which then does continue onwards for the rest of the day so what you need to be thinking about is how people are positioned not only initially when they're entering on the ledge but also positioned to try and play the break off the ledge if they're looking for the break off the ledge then their positioning <coughs> is then vulnerable remember the people trying to play for the break of ledges are generally shorter time frame participants 
So those shorter time frame participants will not hold on when you start breaking levels to the upside. Yeah, they're, they're trying to play short in here for a reward of a break of 69. Holding it back all the way above 22 for another 80 ticks is not something that they're going to be looking for or not something they're going to be willing to hold on to. So you get this scramble to exit. And that's all down to people getting positioned for that ledge break. So just be aware that if you're trying to play for the ledge break, you also need to stay very aware that this ledge break is also building similar people to yourself who are all, all potentially going to stop out in the opposite direction. So hopefully that's answered questions on ledges. Um, I'll wrap it up there. I'll catch you all at 4.45. We'll have a little look at what went on compared to what we thought would be going on this morning. Until then though, guys, have a very good rest of your day's trading. I'll catch you in a little while. Use your places if you do want to get in touch. And if you want me to cover anything specific on Mental Session in Future, message me direct, Richard Ayers here Futures, and I'll be able to pop it in for next week. All right, guys, I'll leave you there. Have a very good rest of your day's trading.